Hi guys, my name is Natasha and today I'm going to be doing an in-depth tutorial on my hands down most requested video which is how I trim and shape my hair. So I'm going to be doing what's basically known as the diva cut and it's when you take your hair and you cut it curl by curl and you add lots of layers so that you bring the volume back up top and it kind of keeps this natural big hair shape. Okay, so to start off, the two things you will need are scissors and a hair pick. Um, for the scissors, you want to make sure you have shears, hair cutting scissors. You don't want to use just kitchen scissors or scissors at the house because shears have a very sharp blade, which means it's going to cut your hair at an even angle and it's not going to cause any split ends. But if you use a dull blade, it can cause more damage than good. So use hair scissors and then the second thing to use is a hair pick just so you can sort of fluff it out and put it in the shape you want as you cut it i'm cutting my hair on day three hair so i washed my hair three days ago and i styled it and i've been refreshing it every day since um, but it's important to do it on day three hair because you see sort of how your hair naturally lies you don't want to do it right after you you know finger coil and put all these products in it and wash it because as time goes on your hair might not look like the way you cut it the first day so you want to do it when your hair is is in a state that you wear it most often and for me that's day three hair so this is what my hair looks like the majority of the time which means it's safe to say that how i cut it now is how the cut is going to look later on so i'm going to start off with my bangs because those have kind of grown out the longest. I'm just going to do the very, very, very front layer. The most important tip I can give about cutting your own hair that I tell all my clients when I give them tips on how to like upkeep with them after I cut their hair is to cut it curl by curl. You do not want to take it and just cut across like this because your hair is not straight, it doesn't work that way. So the difference between cutting curly hair and straight hair is when you cut straight hair, usually you just put it all the same length and just cut straight across. You don't wanna do that with curly hair because you want them to layer naturally on top of each other. So what I do is I take it curl by curl and I cut it right where I need it to be. So these I'm gonna do a little bit shorter because I like to bring a lot of my fringe up forward so it's best for me to have this very front layer kind of short. Okay, now that this very front layer of my bangs is cut, I'm just gonna bring a little bit more forward and I'm gonna take the point right at the center of the top of my head, so right here, and then bring everything forward from there. This is what is gonna give me that round shape and add volume up at the top of my head, and it's gonna make my fro look a lot bigger. The reason I cut the very front layer first is so that it could sort of gauge where the other curls need to be cut. So as you can see, like this one is a lot longer than these up front, so that's a good example of one that I would cut. So just like that. Also, good examples of pieces that need to be cut are pieces that have a curl pattern that's not consistent, especially towards the end. So like this is an example of a curl. And basically what I'm gonna do, like if you can see, it has a spiral up here and then right here it sort of loses it. So I'm just gonna cut that part off. And then the next time I style it or wash it, it's just gonna be a perfect spiral, the exact same width all the way to the end. And that's what really makes your hair um, look very healthy and very trimmed. So like over here, this is looking a little long, so I'm gonna shape that out. And like this is another example of just very, very consistent spirals up until this point and then the curl just automatically looks a lot healthier. And then what I do is I go back even further. So once I pull all of that hair up and kind of fluff and pick it out, I'm gonna do the exact same thing and just use my bangs underneath to gauge where I need to cut the rest of it. Anything covering my eyes, I kind of wanna clear up too.
So again, just picking it out as I go, making sure that I get all the hair at the top of my head so then I can kind of shape it into that round shape that I like. And then also like as I'm going through, I'm just going again and searching for any pieces where it looks curly and then it just kind of dies off into this limp curl because when I cut those, curls in general look a lot healthier. Also another great tip is to kind of toss it to the side and then look at it this way and then there you can see all your curls in one place and make sure that it's a smooth round shape like a moon kind of and just any ones that are a little too long like this one I'm just gonna trim a little bit so I pull my hair forward fluff it out and then cut curl by curl and just make sure they're all layering on top of each other This is also a really great way to find any of those straight ends, like this one. So just automatically, again, the curl just looks a lot healthier. So the shape is starting to come together. And then over here, this one's sort of weighing down, so I'm gonna cut that one. Here's an example of a tapered end, so that obviously it's just kind of scraggly at the end, so I just get rid of that. Another great thing about cutting hair is it's very forgiving. So if you cut, like if I cut this curl all the way up here on accident, like you, you can't tell, you know? So that's why I, I really try to encourage everybody to, um, learn to cut their own hair like follow tips and just practice because it's really not hard and even if you do make a mistake it's easy to come back from it because you're cutting curl by curl you know so you'd have to make like 200 mistakes to end up with a bad haircut altogether okay so now that i have the shape that i like which is my bangs out of my face it's kind of sticking straight up and I have this little, perfect little basketball round shape. The last step is to just make sure you have all of those um, dead ends or straight ends off. So the way that I do that is I pull it forward and then I kind of, <laughs> and then I kind of hold it forward with my hand like this. And then I take my scissors and I just go and I trim all the little fuzzy pieces that are making my hair look less perfect. In its potential like this one is sticking out so I'm gonna cut that and then I just cut any frizz off around the sides okay so now that my hair is cut and I'm satisfied with the shape the last step is to just pick and shake it out to make sure that every curl falls exactly where you want it to I like to pick from the top of my head forward and then like the back. And a little bit under my bangs right here. Okay, so this is the before. So it's kind of like way down at the top. And if you can see my part is showing and I usually like my part completely covered with volume all over and my bangs are sort of a little too in my face so I kind of have to keep them out. Um, but it's just not, it's not the round shape that I like. So. And this is after, so I brought a lot of volume back up top and my curls just all look a little bit healthier because I got rid of those straight ends any split ends, and just anything that's not consistent with a spiral. It's really important to have a good natural haircut, and this goes for if your hair is straight, wavy, kinky, curly, whatever the case may be, 
because it really adds to your confidence and it adds to just your self-love and your self-appreciation of just how your hair was naturally meant to be. And so if you straighten your hair and then cut it, it's gonna look best being straight. So if you wanna have a good hair day, chances are you're gonna think about, okay, well, maybe I should straighten my hair because the cut looks best there. For that reason alone, I think the most important first step of going on a natural hair journey or transitioning or just you know, if you have goals of wearing your hair natural more often, is to have a good haircut. It's not hard to do, it's just kind of scary, you know, putting scissors to your hair, but I think cutting curly hair is a lot easier and more forgiving than cutting straight hair because again, you cut curl by curl and you get to decide how you want your shape to look, not a stylist who you try to communicate your vision to. Everybody should be comfortable when they're getting a haircut. It should not be a scary experience. It should not be, oh my gosh, I don't know how this is gonna turn out. All of that goes away when the scissors are in your hands. But if you're still feeling um, uneasy about cutting your own hair and you wanna come to me, you are very, very welcome. I'm located in Georgia and I go back and forth to New York City a lot. So if you're located in any of those places, you can definitely book me for a curly cut or a curly restoration, just visit my hair page at curly.strands and you can book there. I hope this video was super informative. I tried to put in all the little tips and tricks I do when I cut my own hair and also what I do on my clients when they come to me to cut theirs. So I again, I think everybody should try and cut their own hair because it's definitely saved me a lot of money, a lot of time, and a lot of bad haircuts. Thank you again and I hope I could contribute just a little step in your curly hair journey.